So I would say after reading all the press and all the visiting that you've done around and all the releases that you, if you are not uh, the favorite daughter of CCSU, you've got to be in the, in the top category. Carol has very generously uh, given to CCSU its largest gift ever, as I understand it, some $8 million. That is a generous <laughs> gift. Uh, so Carol, what, I mean, for a gift like that to your university, uh, what mo motivated you to do that? I mean, there had, was there some incident? Was it a, a, a pattern of behavior experience? What was it that caused you to do that? I think it was sheerly gratitude. I was blessed to be able to be fortunate in, in business and be able to uh, reap some very fine financial benefits. And my feelings around that money has always been that my job now, the rest of my life, is to find ways to give that money back. I, 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 I treat myself as a, cust I, I think of myself as a custodian of that money, so to speak, and that uh, I need to find ways to, to give that back. Because if I look back on my time at Central, college really prepares you for the future. And if you're really lucky, um, you walk away with more maturity, you walk away with dreams, you walk away with tools in your toolbox to be able to go out into the world and do some interesting things. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're lucky, you, you do well, and then you need to give back, and Central is something but that... But you know what, Carol, all of us who go to college, right, you mm -hmm. all have that experience with your best professors, and you certainly remember the ones you didn't relate to too well. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the environment of the college itself, and maybe some mentors that you had along the way. Was it a combination of all of the above, or what was it? Was it a particular professor, a particular mentor? What was it about Central? I think it was a couple of things. A mentor certainly was important, and I'll get to that in a moment. But I think when you look at the size of the school, you look at the intimacy that you're allowed to have with other professors in terms of the size, the classrooms are not overwhelming. So you're in that more uh, intimate environment where you're not one of 100 or one of 200. And I had not opportunity to engage with my professors and really learn a lot about myself and what it was that I wanted to do in life. And you talk about mentors. Uh, in, in my chemistry classes, I had a minor in chemistry. Uh, two professors, Dr. Timothy Shine and Dr. Richard Growth, were people that really helped me believe in myself and really uh, uh, be able to study the sciences and go out then and Are they still them. here, Carol? Uh, no, they're both retired, they're but both I had the opportunity to, to meet, meet with them? Dr. Shine a short while ago, and I'll be seeing Dr. Growth later today. And uh, we kept in contact for a number of years after school, and I'm really looking forward to seeing Dr. Growth today. So uh, they both made a very uh, important um, mark in my, in my yeah. life. And well, my that must make them very pleased and proud as well. Oh, I if, suspect so. They, did you keep they in touch with them, themselves. Carol? Absolutely, I did. Oh, you did we, all we, the time. We kept in touch probably for about five years after school, and then as mm -hmm. things as things develop, you you that that falls apart to some extent. But but they were always with me, so to speak, as I I um, went through my career and had challenges and and choices to make in my career. It's it's that early development that I think made me help helped me make the right choices. So in, in, a, in an act of reciprocity, I guess is the right word, mm -hmm. uh, in return for your very, very generous gift, uh, Central has named the School of Arts and Sciences. Right. After you. So, I mean, is the banner up? Uh, did they change the building already, Carol? No, we'll or? be doing that at 11 o'clock today. Today? Uh, yes, yes. So there's like a little ribbon cutting ceremony? Uh, yes. Well, I don't know. They, they haven't <laughs> told me what's all in store, but I think it'll be a, a wonderful. Won't that be great? You and get a beautiful day for it. Absolutely. It'll be a special moment in my life for sure. It's, um, I, I'm blessed to be able to have this happen. It's, I've always said that so many people go after their career and work hard, just like I worked hard, but to have all of this um, happen for me, it's the, the good fortune and serendipity in my life and the people in my life, um, I am forever grateful. Well, you know what, Carol, there is a, um, I mean, there's an old axiom about uh, come back, uh, give back, stay mm -hmm. back, and I think there's a percentage of people uh, like yourself who actually do that, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's great for you to do that. So. The gift is going to be used to fund scholarships, scholarships absolutely. and also, as I understand it, uh, an academic, certain academic programs. Could you talk to us a bit about, are there particular scholarships, Carol, particular programs that you're going to fund? 
These are the, the programs are to be determined, but the bulk of the ninety percent of the the money goes towards scholarships, and it's an endowment that will continue in perpetuity, and we'll be able to give to a broad group of students. You know, my goal was not just to pick the the students with the perfect four O. Um, students come here in uh, and have all variety of capabilities and uh, all of them should be uh, able to compete for these scholarships. And I think to the extent that you have students that would otherwise have to drop out of school mm -hmm. and the, the ability for them to be able to finish and go on and, and um, do great things and then pay it back to other people and uh, pay it forward, so to speak, in whatever way they can is what this is all about. So this about. is not a situation, Carol, where it only goes to the biology student, which was your major with a 4.0. No, this absolutely. This is a, a full spectrum. It's a full spectrum across arts and sciences, so um, uh, many, many students will be able to benefit from this, and it doesn't have to just be biology or chemistry students. It's across the, bo across the board. So after you retired from Endo as its CEO, yes. in fact, as you were the founder of the company, we'll yes. get into that a little bit, you have a foundation yes. it's named after yourself. Tell us, uh, is that what you're doing? I mean, for someone who has been so mm -hmm. incredibly active over all these years and so successful, is that what you're doing now? That's uh, tending just, to the foundation, Carol, a, or is there a, more? Yeah, it's a small piece of it, and I actually have a director of the foundation, a, a physician, an MD that um, runs the foundation uh, because a third of the foundation is around healthcare, um, a third is around education, and a third is devoted towards children with disabilities, and so oh. she uh, really looks at a, a broad uh, array of requests that come in and grants that come in, and and then she will help me make the decisions as to how we best leverage the money that we give away each year. Because you can't give to everybody and to everything. You, the, then you don't leverage the money. And we try to give in a way that will we'll leverage it, such as giving students scholarships, mm -hmm. because then they'll go on, complete their degrees, and hopefully we'll start to give back in so some she's, ways. So she's your executive director. She, so she you sit as director. chair of the board? Chair of the board. But then um, I also spend my time doing some ad hoc teaching uh, I, at the University of Delaware in their business program. I, I'm going up to Harvard on Monday to actually the, the, do a lecture the, at the AMP, and uh, I sit on their healthcare advisory board. I chair. I saw that, yeah. Yes, and I chair our hospital system in Delaware, which is a thousand bed hospital. And that takes a, a great deal of time, but it's a labor of love. And I sit on uh, two of DuPont's boards, the Winter mm -hmm. Tour and, and the Hagley Museum, which are really associated with the early days of the family. And Endo was formed from, you went a transition as president of I was president of DuPont Pharmaceuticals Proprietary You did business. a buyout, there was X number of businesses and you formed Endo, right? I did, I essentially bought assets, I bought products and, and I bought Percocet was the key product that That's I bought. That's a painkiller. Yes, and I wanted to build a pain company around that product and bring new unmet, uh, uh, new products for unmet medical needs to a broad group of people. And that's what we essentially did, took it public, and uh, we were able to get an excellent payback. And that's why I'm in a position to be able to give money away. Well, mate, you, I guess I could make the case, mm -hmm. uh, Carol, that when I track your career from the beginning, you were very much a successful corporate businesswoman. Yes. And given the size of what you formed with Endo, I, I wouldn't call it a small entrepreneurial ship, <laughs> right. but there's a, there's a bit of entrepreneurial ship in there, right? What, what drove your decision? There you were sitting there as the president, and you decided, I'm gonna form my own company, call it Endo. What drove you to that? It's interesting because I had always envisioned at some point later in my career when I retired, I'd open a small bookstore in a small town someplace. And uh, this turned out to be a little bit bigger than a small bookstore. But uh, I think a couple of things. I had the, the opportunity to work through the early years of DuPont Pharmaceuticals when they were really focused in the area of pain management. Their focus shifted to cardiovascular drugs, to AIDS mm -hmm. drugs. But yet I still always had that keen interest in the area of pain management. At the time that I was in, in a position to buy these assets, the area of pain management was changing dramatically. And when Percocet went up for sale, it was the perfect drug to be a cornerstone of a buyout. Uh, it was about six months after coming back from Harvard's AMP program, and I think that was a life-changing event for me because I had three months to intensely focus on myself, right. which you don't have in your adult career. Mm -hmm.